Hello, everybody. Welcome to week three of our course. Thank you very much for bearing with me. Thank you for reading all the announcements and your module. Thank you for taking on the materials that I am giving to you. So I always give you the lecture recording, the lecture notes, as well as the slides. So it's up to your own pace. And you have the flexibility when you are going to work on your modules, okay? But I would like to remind you, work on your modules before our consultation hour so that by the time we have our consultation hour, you will ask me all your questions and we can directly address all your concerns. Let me remind you, your prelim exam is coming up. And it is open camera for one hour and 30 minutes. So kindly secure a very stable internet connection. And before your prelim exam, practice solving problems every day. Okay, A little each day will go a long way. All right. So speaking of practice solving problems, we're going to solve problems today regarding capacitance as well as dielectrics. So kindly, oh no, kindly bear with me for this lecture. And if you have questions, if you have concerns, you can directly message me on Canvas. Okay, so I am sharing to you my screen. Our module three topic is all about capacitors and dielectrics. So what are these electronics? When we say capacitors, these are the devices that store electric potential energy by storing separated positive and negative charges. So we already learned about positive and negative charges. For capacitors, they must have both the positive and negative charges. So any two conductors insulated from one another form a capacitor. So we already know the electric field lines coming out from the positively charged object and going towards the negatively charged object. By the way, credits to Addison Wesley Longman Incorporated. I am using their, uh, their resources or their material as my resource for this or reference. Okay. Now, we have our simplest capacitor, and it is the parallel plate capacitor. And we have our formula for capacitance, which is equivalent to the charge divided by the voltage or the potential difference. So we have here our two parallel plates. One is positively charged. The other is negatively charged. Okay, so this capacitor is being charged. It is at a certain area. The plate has is having a certain area rather, and they are placed at a distance from each other. So our capacitance is equal to E times the area over the distance, where E is the permittivity of free space having the constant value of 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 column squared per newton meter squared. You have that um, constant value in your calculator, okay? So just get the manual of your calculator and take a look where can you find the constant E, which is the permittivity of free space. So you don't have to memorize that. Or if you can memorize the better, because again, your exam will be open camera, all right? And the unit of capacitance is called the farad, which is equivalent to column per, per volt. Okay, so I have here sample problems for you to answer, and I guess they are also in your module. And I will give you an example on how to solve problems with um, capa capacitances later. Okay, so let's just move forward on how to solve for the equivalent capacitance for capacitors that are connected in series and parallel. Okay, for two capacitors connected in series, the equivalent capacitor would be 1 over CEQ, which is the equivalent capacitance, is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So they are connected in parallel. When you draw your 
diagram for this, okay, circuit diagram, you have the symbol for capacitor to be two parallel lines indicating the positively charged plate and the negatively charged plate, okay? Now, for series connection, the voltage would be the sum of the voltage of each capacitor. Moving on, we also have our capacitors in parallel connection. For capacitors in parallel, when we get the equivalent capacitance, just add up all the capacitance values. So it is just the sum. And your voltage will be equal, okay? Your, your total voltage is equal to the voltage in the first capacitor, and it is also equal to the voltage of the second capacitor. Okay, so let us solve some problems regarding capacitors that are connected in series and connected in parallel. Okay, so can we take a screenshot or photo of the problems as I will be sharing to you my notes so that later you can glance your, you can take a look at the problem while we are solving for the equivalent capacitance and the charge of each circuit diagram. So is my notes there? Let me check first. Okay, it's there. Okay, again, I am sending everything to you. All the lecture notes, this recording. So... Kindly take your part in also passing this course. Work on your modules. If you have questions, email me directly. If you have concerns, you may see me during consultation hour. Okay, now we are asked for the equivalent capacitance and the charge for each circuit diagram with our capacitors. Okay, so let us take note again for series connection. Our equivalent capacitance is 1 over CEQ over 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 and so on. How many capacitors are there? So until CN. Okay, and our voltage for series connection is the sum of all the voltages of each capacitor and so on until the end. Now for capacitors that are in parallel, oh, sorry, sorry, for parallel, we have our equivalent capacitance to be the sum of all the capacitances of our capacitors. And our voltage will be equal to all the voltages that are there until the end. Okay. Now, solving for number one. Okay. For number one, we have our circuit diagram. Again, capacitors are being symbolized as two parallel lines. They are parallel lines. Okay, sorry for my drawing, guys. You may refer to the problem for the proper drawing. Oops. Okay, and this is different with the symbol for the voltage. For the voltage, the symbol will be one small line and the other longer line. Okay, so that means that this one is negative here and this one is positive here. Okay, and for capacitors it is parallel lines okay so this is three microfarad we have one microfarad we have two microfarad we have four microfarad farad comes by the way from the scientist michael faraday or faraday okay it's up to you how to pronounce that all right so here, the first thing that we're going to do is to condense our capacitor. So we say condense, we will combine capacitors one time from another or each time. How do you call that one? Okay, so first we are going to condense these 
two capacitors here. In condensing the two capacitors, they are connected in parallel. So how are we going to get the equivalent capacitance for parallel connection? We are just simply going to add all. Okay, so our, if we are going to add, so CEQ is equal to 1 microfarad plus 2 microfarad. So for our first um, capacitors that we are condensing, we have the equivalent capacitance of 3 microfarad. So we are going to draw our circuit diagram again. Okay, drawing our circuit diagram again. The two capacitors are now being combined. Okay. We have still space. Yes. So, right. The one is larger. That is 5 volts. Oops. And this is 4 microfarad. 3 microfarad. Just copy. And our condensed for the 1 and 2, we have a sum of 3 microfarad. And we have 6 microfarad. Just copy again. Okay. So we have now our second condensed um, circuit diagram. Now we are going to condense again the capacitors that are here. They are connected in series. Now for series connection, our, capa our equivalent capacitors will be 1 over CEQ. So we have 1 over 3 microfarad plus 1 over 3 microfarad plus 1 over 6 microfarad. And our equivalent capacitance for this, do not forget it is 1 over 1 over plus 1 over. And the sum of that, you get the reciprocal for it because our formula 1 over CEQ. Okay, so mostly that would be the error that we are going to make. Okay, so the equivalent capacitance for this is 1.2 microfarad. Kindly get your calculators, guys. I want you to be proactive in this course as you are responsible in passing this course. All right. So here we have the equivalent capacitance for these capacitors here, 1, 2, 3. And we are going to draw again our condensed. Um, circuit diagram for our um, last condensed circuit diagram okay it's like this guys okay so we have our five volts and the equivalent capacitance of, of the three 1.2 microfarad and we have the four microfarad. Now this time they are connected again in parallel. So in parallel, our equivalent capacitance is 1.2 plus four microfarad. So we have now our answer for letter A, which is 5.2 microfarad. This is the equivalent capacitance of all the capacitors in the circuit diagram. Okay, now we are also asked for the charge. Our charge is equal to Q is equal to CV. Now we are going to take the equivalent capacitance of the total capacitors of, or, or of all the capacitors in our diagram. So we have 5.2 microfarad. We should have it in farad. So we have 5.2 times 10 to the negative 6 farad. Take note, micro, okay? You have that in your measurement, okay? You have times 10 to the negative farad. Negative 6, sorry, okay? And our voltage is 5 volts. Just multiply. Our charge is 2.6 times 10 to the negative 5 column, okay? Why is this column? Farad is equal to column over volt. Okay, and you cancel out the volt because you have this multiplied by the volt, so that cancels out. 
what remains is column for the charge okay that is for the charge all right now um let us do letter uh, number two for number two we have our different circuit diagram here okay just kindly draw properly there at your end all right and we have 12 volts 10 microfarad 8 microfarad 12 microfarad and 15 microfarad so first and foremost where are we going to condense what capacitors are we first combining we are first combining these two capacitors oh sorry what happened we are first combining these two capacitors here on top all right so combining that they are connected in series for series connection we have one over so one over eight microfarad plus one over 12 microfarad you have a 4.8 microfarad for that one okay get your calculator again okay so since you are combining, let us draw again our equivalent capacitor, uh, capacitance, sorry. Okay, and that will be like this. So this is now our 12 volts, our 10 microfarad, 15 microfarad, and the equivalent capacitance earlier when we combined 8 and 12, we have 4.8 microfarad. Okay, so after that, we can now combine the capacitors that are in parallel. All right, so combining that one for parallel connection, you just simply add 4.8 and 15 microfarad. That is microfarad, okay? So we have 19.8 micro, oh sorry, 19.8, that is 8. I will just erase guys for you. Okay, can we follow 19.8 microfarad for that one? And then we will draw our last condensed diagram for this example. Okay. You have now 19.8 microfarad and the 10 microfarad capacitor, 12 volts. They are now connected in series. So for series connection, 1 over CQ, 1 over 19.8 microfarad plus 1 over 10 microfarad. So our equivalent capacitance now for our overall um connection or circuit diagram is 7.47 7 microfarad okay never forget to get the reciprocal of the sum okay because that is our usual error and getting the charge 7.7 7 q is equal to cv 7.47 7 times 10 to the negative 6 farad times 12 volts you get the charge to be 8.96 times 10 to the negative 5 column. Okay, so that is our answer for these two um, circuit diagrams for capacitors that are connected in series and in parallel. Now let us move on to dielectrics. Okay, so our capacitors are are having both parallel plates and in between them there could there should be dielectrics so these are the insulating materials that can withstand electric fields larger than those that cause air to break down okay so um let us go back to the to our drawing for the capacitor okay this is our capacitor parallel plate one is positively charged, the other is negatively charged. In between them, okay, in between them, it is air 
and air will break, okay? Because of the electric field, all right? So there must be insulators that should be there and we call them dielectrics, okay? So we insert them here in between the parallel plates in order for it not to break. Okay, so dielectrics could be paraffin paper, teflon, rubber, etc. Okay, you can search other dielectric materials. Now, we have the dielectric constant for dielectrics and that is equal to the ratio of the capacitances. Okay, and we have our relationship for the dielectric with the voltage. The effect of a dielectric between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor is, is that um, the dielectric will increase the charge that you're going to use for the battery. Okay, so let us have our example for this. Okay, you have two examples that is in your module. You work this out for yourselves. Okay, and we also have this example okay you have a parallel plate capacitor with plates having an area we are given an area of 8 times 10 to the negative 4 oh my god i did not share sorry guys i will repeat again fine oh, lord okay Okay, I will repeat myself again. <laughs> Sorry, so we have our dielectrics. And as what I've said earlier, dielectrics will be here. Okay, so these are our capacitors. Let me check if my screen is really there. Okay. Na good ba? Ay, nako. Wait, wait, wait. Good moment. Okay, my screen is there. All right. So we have our two parallel plates. One is positively charged. The other is negatively charged. Now, due to the electric field, okay, it will break the air. Okay, that's why we must insert insulating materials, okay? And these insulating materials are called dielectrics. So it must be inserted here in between the plates of the capacitors. We call them dielectrics, okay? So dielectrics can withstand electric fields that are larger than those that cause air to break down, okay? For, for capacitors that do not have dielectrics, the dielectric constant is one that is for the air okay air hanging okay so we have our examples for dielectrics okay so dielectric constant k is just the ratio of the capacitances and we have the relationship for the dielectric constant with the voltage okay so we have our example okay so we have our area 8 times 10 to the negative 4 meters squared. They are separated at a distance of 1.77 millimeter. The capacitor is connected to a 12-volt battery and a dielectric of dielectric constant K is equal to 3 is inserted between the plates. So there is that dielectric that is inserted. Now you are asked for the charge that is being stored the electric field strength throughout the dielectric and assuming that the capacitor was fully charged before the dielectric was inserted how much additional charge was supplied by the battery when the dielectric was inserted kindly take a photo of this problem i will be sharing to you my notes again okay thank you very much And here I go. Let us solve that problem. Okay, is the notes there already? All right, it is there. Okay, so again, we have our given, which is 8 times 10 to the negative 4 meters squared. That is our area. 
the distance in between the parallel plates, 1.77 millimeter, the, the voltage, which is 12 volts, and the dielectric constant K, which is 3. We are asked for the charge that is stored. Okay? We already learned that charge is equal to QCV. Now, we are not given the capacitance value. We are given only the area and the distance. So we must compute for the capaci capacitance first. So for the capacitance, previously, as what we had talked about earlier, we have our, our formula to be the permittivity of free space times the area divided by the distance. Okay, this is now our example for the first part. Okay, so permittivity of free space, it is in your calculator that is a constant value, 8.85 and so on. Okay, but I will just write 8.85 here times 10 to the negative 12, but do not round off. Okay, just round off but at the end of your computations. All right, so our unit for that column squared per newton meter squared and our area our area is given 8 times 10 to the negative 4 meter squared okay divided by the distance in between them it is 1.77 millimeter so you must convert it into meter remember guys to be always consistent with your units okay that is very important so the meter squared cancels out here. And our, 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 what do you call this? Okay, we have column squared. And we also have newton and we also have meter. Okay, and the capacitance is in farad. And as what we had talked about earlier, okay, farad is column per volt all right so and voltage um just get the the units just just play around with the units and why did this come to farad okay so our capacitance for this is 4 times 10 to the negative 12 farad now we can now compute for the charge so charge is equal to q is equal to CV, so we have times 10 to the negative farad, times the voltage given, we have 12 volts, so the charge is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 11 column. That is our answer for letter A. Now, let us proceed for letter B. What is asked for letter B? We are asked for the electric field strength. For the electric field strength, we had talked about electric field in our last module. We have our formula voltage divided, divided by the distance. So our voltage is 12 volts. The distance is 1.77. Hmm. Okay. The distance is 1.77 times 10 to the negative. Um, three meter, okay, because it is 1.77 millimeter, okay, milli is times 10 to the negative three, okay, so we have our electric field strength throughout the dielectric to be 6,779.66 volts per meter, that is our answer for letter D, and finally for letter C, we are asked for the charge when the dielectric is being inserted. Okay, again, dielectrics are the insulating materials that are inserted between the parallel plates of a capacitor. So our charge will now be, we insert the dielectric KCV. Okay, why? We had our relationship earlier that K or the dielectric constant K is the ratio of the capacitances okay so our dielectric constant is three from the given 
our capacitance as what we have previously solved in letter A, 4 times 10 to the negative 12 farad, and the given voltage is 12. Okay, and the dielectric, uh, no, and the charge is 1.44 times 10 to the negative 10 columns. Okay, so that means, okay, from letter A, your charge was 4.8 times 10 to the negative 11. And when you inserted the dielectric, it became 1.44 times 10 to the negative 10. So that means there is an increase in the charge. Okay, Q increases as dielectric. is inserted between the parallel plates capacitor. All right, so that's it for this morning. Okay, so I do hope that you are working on your modules. I do hope that you understand all our topics. Everything is given to you, the lecture recordings, the notes, as well as the slides. So you can surely answer your modules. So practice solving every day, every day, a little, every day comes a long way because your prelim exam is open camera. So if you haven't practiced solving during our prelim exam, it is time pressured. Let me ask you, can you answer? Can you solve all the problems or not? Again, prelim exam is open camera one and a half hour only. So practice solving each and every day so that during the exam, you can answer without getting nervous of you being in front of the camera. Good morning, everyone, and see you in our le next lecture recording. And consultation hour is also every week. So see me on consultation hour. Goodbye.